I'm Heather from Hey Buck Tubes, and today are books that avoid my trust. So this is not like entirely accurate because as you'll see, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> I am going to kind of run you through some of my mental gymnastics and honestly, it's exhausting. <laughs> I don't think that this is legitimate. I feel like a lot of these things, I in my mind, I'm like, this is unreasonable pull back but also I do know that I do have like that feeling with along my spine and small my back and in my chest that's like oh I don't think I'm gonna like that because <laughs> so honestly anytime I do pick a, up a book that is recommended to me consider it a feat like it's impressive that I made it there and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why so the first thing is any of the really long paranormal series from the like 2000s 2010s except for Alona Andrews because Alona Andrews is the holy grail it's correct if you are recommending Alona Andrews you are right we are right together <laughs> but all of the others all of the others all of them, whether I have tried them or not, I'm just like, no. <laughs> I have DNF'd so many first books in these series. So many. Or I've read one and been done with them. Or I've just been like, no. <laughs> I think part of that is because I didn't read them when they were coming out. I did try and get into them in the 2020s. I think that could definitely contribute to it. But the reality just is I haven't fallen in love with any of them except for Alona Andrews so every time it's recommended I'm like of course it's being recommended of course it is <laughs> next is any book that is too dark for me which is a lot of them let's be honest I really do I really do like struggle when a book is too dark for me and I will do enough. I will bail. I will get out of there as quickly as I can, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I finish it and any book that's too dark for me, I'm like, okay, I don't know if I can trust your <laughs> recommendations when it comes to dark stuff because you said it was fine and it was not fine. <laughs> I was not okay. I was stressed out my little mind. So, and that's like a lot. It's a lot of them. So is that true? No, I do still listen to some people's recommendations who have done me dirty. But at the same time, in my mind, I'm like, remember that time when we read that? And it was like, <laughs> so there's that. All right, books with trauma that you didn't mention and you didn't warn me with. This is iffy, right? Because all of our memories fallible. It's difficult to like remember all of the content warnings for a book that you read three years ago. It's just not likely to happen for me. I have a difficult time remembering everything I read last week. Like every part of the book, that's just not how my brain retains things. So I make note of the content warnings and they're not always perfect, right? So this is definitely a thing that like you need to give grace you you need to do the best that you can to warn people and then also accept that that might not be a complete list that's why it's great when authors do do content warnings at the beginning of their book because you're not relying on anyone else right but when it's like when it's like a big part of the story and you're just like oh it's so cute <laughs> and then it's like and they died i am not not a fan. Often if I know that trauma is in a book, I will avoid it. Books where the sex was bad. <laughs> when the sex is bad and you didn't say that the sex was bad, I'm just like really questioning your taste. <laughs> Here's the thing, especially with sex, right? So many different factors determine whether or not it's fun for you. We all have our things that we enjoy. We all have our things we dislike. Not only that, but it can be something you do enjoy, but you don't like the way they did it. And it can be something you've never even heard of before. It, like there's a lot of different possibilities, right? But when the sex was bad and you're raving about it, I'm 
judging you so hard. <laughs> all right, any book that I've DNF'd. Now you all know, surely you know, that this literally applies to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. <laughs> I don't know anyone that hasn't recommended a book that I've DNF'd, let's be honest here. But I do still hold it against you. <laughs> on the little scorecard in my mind, based on how many things I've enjoyed from your recommendations, <laughs> the DNFs are on there, okay? They factor into my calculations on whether or not I actually think I'll enjoy this book. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying that it makes any sense, especially because none of you are exempt. You have all recommended things that I have DNF'd um, or loved things that I have DNF'd. But the reality is that I'm like questionable, questionable, because I DNF'd that so fast, so hard. Would do it again in a second. So, you know, not fair, but true. <laughs> Is kind of the theme of this video. Books that are overwhelmingly popular. You can absolutely love the most popular books in the world. I do. I am not a hater <laughs> in that sense. I love, I love a lot of popular books, right? And if you love it, who cares who else is reading it, right? That doesn't matter at all. The thing that gets me is when every one of your videos is just the popular books or that book series is in every single video that touches on any of the things that apply to that series and I am having my eyes glaze over let's be honest here because I don't need to hear it recommended again and so <laughs> I just, I do it on TikTok, I do it on BookTube, I do it on Instagram. When you're like, Fae Romance, and your first one is Akatar, I'm just like, who needs to know that Akatar is Fae Romance? Which, again, it's not always true. There's always new people. People have never heard of it before. People have never been in the book community before. People that have never been on that platform before. So no matter what it is, there are people hearing about it for the first time. It's old news to you, it's not old news to them, right? So this is a dumb caveat, but it is how I feel. If I liked it before it got super popular, I reserve the right to continue recommending it. And I feel that way for other people too. I'm like, if you were the person, like if you were early on that train, then like I don't mind you continuing to recommend it. I don't know why that makes a difference. It shouldn't, it, it doesn't matter at all. But in my head, I'm like, no, I loved this before it was popular and I retain the right to mention it every video that I went to. But when all five of your recommendations are like bestsellers, I don't know, that's not what I need. And so I am not particularly interested in it. And so I kind of tend to avoid it. And if there is a book in that section that I haven't really heard of, I tend to just ignore it too, because I'm like, all right, well, one through four, I wouldn't bother to recommend. And then five, I probably, I've never heard of it, but I probably won't care. <laughs> if you only like angst, if you like angsty romances, if you like it when the couple gets together on the last page and the whole book is them not being able to get together but wanting to be together, I hate that. I don't want to read that. I don't like it. It's not my preferred taste. And so if it is what you love, more power to you, but I'm not reading the books that you're recommending because I can only assume that they are to your taste, which is opposite of mine, so I don't like it. Where they die at the end. <laughs> I will cry, first of all. I will sob my little eyes out and I will hate it. And I will hate you <laughs> for doing this to me. I'll cry and I will feel betrayed. <laughs> Plots that make no sense. This is something that really gets me in romances because a lot of times the strength of a romance writer is the relationship and the characters, which I love. 
and there are plenty of romance authors who can do a plot to perfection, right? But there are a lot of romance authors that should leave the plot alone because they're bad at it and it makes no sense. And I am over here po not even trying to poke holes in it, but the holes are like staring me in the face. Ignore that. And <laughs> I'm just like, okay, but this doesn't work. You said this, but then this cancels out that. You said, oh, this solves the problem, but in reality, they should still kill them. <laughs> and it just frustrates me every time when I'm like, you should have gone back to the drawing board because A plus B does not equal 23. <laughs> Problematic authors, if you are regularly, consistently reading and wrecking problematic authors, then no. And I'm not saying I'm one off. I'm not saying you and I disagree on this author and that's okay. I'm saying you make it as a general rule that you do not care that an author is problematic. You're going to read them anyways and you're going to be annoyed and frustrated with anyone who points out that that is not a good person to be promoting. And like you just, you don't care about that. You make it a habit to pick up problematic authors I just don't trust your recommendations. I really, really don't. So that's it. Like I said, it's not really true because all of you have recommended me these things and I try to like be like, Heather, be reasonable. <laughs> but my feelings are my feelings and I feel them and they are, oh, remember when they had us read that? Cause that was not, that was not a good time. So. <laughs> So if I have read a book from you and loved it, congratulations. If I've read more than one book from you, congratulations. If I have DNF'd or low starred a book that you like and still take your recommendation, listen, you are like way up here and you should be thrilled to your soul. <laughs> Because on the scale of Heather trusting people, you have overcome hurdles that most people cannot. I mean, you're still doing these things, but at least I'm still kind of listening to you. So let me know if there is a book or a book thing that when people recommend you, you're like, oh, no. And I'm side-eyeing, suspecting uh, any and every recommendation that you give to me from here on out. So. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.